This is iFanboy Pick of the Week, number 883, brought to you by iFanboy listeners just like you. Hi, I'm Josh Flanagan, and I'm questioning things. I'm here with my co-host, Connor Kilpatrick. Hi. Please please don't up-talk the entire show. (laughs) I was trying to see if I could do it without it sounding like that, but I guess it wasn't possible. (coughs) Yeah, no, no, not impossible. This is iFanboy Pick of the Week, number 883. Every week, one of us picks the book they like best from their stack of comics. We call that the Pick of the Week. We'll talk about that book and other comics in the week. The patron pick we'll uh, do. If there's a listener mail a time, we will do that thing. Uh, there's a big announcement. Big, big announcement. It's a major award. Now, <laughs> later in the show about the uh, we've been talking about the Patreon. Uh, iFanboy Patreon getting revamped. And uh, it happened. We we didn't just talk about a thing. We did a thing. So that'll happen. We'll talk about it later. Are you are you sufficiently? Do you think that they're they're all you know uh, jazzed up about it now? I, I hope so. I, I assume people are skipping ahead and just skipping yeah. the comic talk. Forget the comic talk. <laughs> let's get some. Let's get some of that sweet Patreon information. <laughs> uh, there will be spoilers, so you've been warned. Exercise caution, Connor. We're gonna get going. You had the pick this week. I. I had a book in I, so the last time Clobber and Time came out, and this is the pick week was Clobber and Time number four. I mentioned how I was the book I was most excited for, the Marvel book I was most excited for, was the book I read last. And so, thus again, Clobber and Time number four was the book I read, the Marvel book I read last, and also the book I read last. And so, up until I read Clobber and Time, I had another pick of the week. As will like, happen. Oh. I was like, oh, this is totally going to be the pick of the week. And I loved it. We're going to talk about it in a second. But Look, Clobber Times are really fucking good, <laughs> and it, we talk special. about it a lot. And, it, and, and I've noticed lately, we when we, we hone in on a book, we tend to pick it a lot. And and look, it's yes. just a way to talk. It's just a way to intro the show. It's not like you know, there's no major award here for Steve Scrooge. But I I, I was about three quarters of the way through this issue, and I was like, God damn it, this is the pick of the week again. Yeah. First of all, the art is tremendous. Uh, Steve Scrooge is. Um, is a modern day sort of classic artist. Like he's a talked about in revered in revered terms. He's he's, he he's like uh oh the Shaolin Cowboy guy. Jeff Darrow. Okay. Jeff Darrow. He's a Jeff Darrow like this book to me, it's not Beta Ray Bill. No. But it lives in that world of sort of like different from the comics and exciting when it comes out. And you know, as we talked about, each issue's been a team up with a different Marvel character. This one is Doctor Doom. And it's such a good Doctor Doom. <laughs> I love Doctor Doom. Like I know we know. We, we we make no bones about our love for Doctor Doom on the show, but I love Doctor Doom. He's probably my like, favorite Marvel villain. Do you like Doom in his many different uh, configurations? Yeah, I mean, like, or do you I mean, have like a Doom that you really? I mean, like I know there's like an Ur Doom, but do you like that there's sort of different, you know, different Dooms? Yeah, we, that we you liked can go to? we liked that Doom mini where he was sort of. And you know he Doom 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 is a Doom is a villain. He's probably Marvel's mm-hmm. best villain, but he's also kind of an antihero when you, when well. they need him to be. And uh, you know when he, when you grow up with the characters, you can do that. He's the he's the mm-hmm. he, he's the Boyd Crowder to uh, <laughs> the Fantastic Four's Raylan Givens, right? So sometimes the Doom will be the bad guy, and sometimes Doom will help Raylan fight a worse bad guy. So yes, what I like here is. This is a doom out of time, so this is sort of old man doom that the thing comes to figure out. Like this is a doom from much later in the timeline. He's a kind of a grumpier old man with and, a, with a very lowbrow, broad joke to give <laughs> you that reveal. By the way, right? Yes, Doombot yes, gives him prune juice. It just everything about this is considered. The art is wonderful. The characterizations are great. This is a totally awesome Ben Grimm. At one point, he's flying around and looks like Orion's. It from looks exactly like Orion's thing. <laughs> Orion's thing. I think, but I think the artist is just like, you know what? <laughs> I want to draw him flying around on Orion's thing, and uh, hopefully Marvel doesn't get sued, but it's not my problem. And so this is the second and last issue we learn about the bad guy. So the whole time, the thing has been tormented by this time-traveling character who has a silly name, which I don't think I really sort of clocked until this episode issue. Psycho... Pomp. Psycho Pomp. I'll do phrase. And at first I thought psych- uh, Psycho Pimp is better. Pomp is weird. 
but they, then he he's, he's, he's nicknamed Psycho Poop. Psycho Poop. <laughs> but he, we get we get his whole story. Doom has been you know fighting him or tracking him or investigating him. So amongst all the chaos, we we learn about him, and he's sort of uh, he's covered in tattoos of the icons of the heroes and the villains. We find that he's like sort of their biggest fan from the way back in the way off in the future, and he realized that uh, his uh, decimated lifestyle, his his planet of of decay, is because of the heroes and the villains fighting each other. And so he goes back in time to stop them or destroy them. And he may in fact be the smartest person to ever live, which of course doom does not like that idea, but he did admit it. Like yeah. he was the one who came. He was like, I, I got to say, he's not as smart as me, obviously, but you know, he's got his doubts. I don't think, I think that possibly some of doom's behavior may be based on some self-esteem issues that he's not willing to confront. He might have those. It's um, possible. And the thing is when you have a character like doom, who has been friends with, or not friends with, but he's known Ben Grimm, you know, he was, <laughs> college doom was college roommates or or rivals with reed and reed was friends with ben he's you know they've known each other since they were in their 20s but also doom wants what reed has i mean ultimately sure. there's a there's an yeah. envy there and so it's the that's a different thing. yeah so so there's a different thing is like you know you've got this guy as your best friend like so i have to hate him or torture him but really i just want him to love me too I don't know that that's really right. in here, but it's funny because it's all there, you know, if you want and, it. If but you, take but you have this sense of, of of familiarity. These guys have known each other for however however yes. old they are now. You know, it's like eventually when, when we turn on each other, Josh, it'll be very all the more tragic because we will have known each other since we were in college. And so that's kind of the th- thing that you can play with here. I love the Why food Why did you bring gag. this up again? Why did you bring <laughs> this up again? I wanted to make sure, we, to make sure you, re- you just didn't for- know that I'd forgotten. So we have... You know what you did. He keeps serving Ben this, Lat- what he claims is a Latvian delicacy called Chivap Chichi, which <laughs> looks like some real unappetizing it's, brains and fish and fish it's heads. It's a beautiful and, drawing. Like it's such a good chicken piece feet of cartooning. And yeah. asparagus in like a stew. <laughs> and he's, Ben really hates it, but it's all he's got to eat. All he wants is a goddamn cheeseburger. And then as he goes off for the final battle, he sees that Doom has a half eaten cheeseburger on his on his in his workshop and he was like son of a and it was just like little they kept doing little bits like that over and over again um that really made me laugh and were, and just gorgeously drawn and then we have this crazy watcher who is now involved in the story it's just super fun and i'm so excited when this book comes out i even overlooked the body horror bit with the with the watcher's head being taken off in the brains yeah. and and didn't like that's, that but that's what you're gonna get with See, I this would say scroach, I would say scroachy, but I don't know why. I think because scroach makes me uncomfortable. But if it's like Jim Croce, I'm cool. Yeah, but I mean, no one knows. That's the beauty of all this, right? And if I could <laughs> save time in a bottle, I would spend every minute with you. I like scroach, but it scroach. could be scroachy. <laughs> the scroach, scroach <laughs> is the name of like an '80s movie's best friend. Oh yeah, Whoa, is scroach coming. Yeah, <laughs> scroach has arrived, and he's brought the brewskis. He's got those sunglasses that have the slats. <laughs> Like louvered, <laughs> so, louvered glasses, <laughs> like the back window of a Trans Am with the extra package. <laughs> you know, like you said, this isn't like transcendent, like Beta Ray Bill, but no, it's very, it's, very it, good. And I like that they're doing these like out of con, not out of continuity, but just to the, to the side of continuity character minis. They're really strong. It, it's one of those things about the the trade mini series world is that. I feel like we used to get a lot of miniseries, but they were usually still in continuity in the world. Now somebody can just be like, I'd like to tell a story about this character. And they go, that's cool. Have fun. And a high you know? level creator too, right? Yeah. Like this is- yeah. Well, I mean, as opposed to having a high level creator come in and then be like, okay, you also have to adhere to, he's like this, and this is his yep. dumb suit that he wears now. And he just broke up with his girlfriend uh, who's an alien, and they just, just like, no, I just gonna, I just, can I just do Doom and thing? And they go, yeah, sure. And the thing is, for a long, long time, Marvel didn't do these kind of stories. No. So we used to say, oh, you know, I don't, there's no like self contained trade I can give to someone for Marvel. It was always like everything is in continuity, everything is in this, pro, you know, in the main book. But mm-hmm. they're doing, they've been doing more and more of these, which is great. Yeah. I applaud it. Good now, stuff. Uh, up until this point, the pick of the week was going to be Captain Marvel 184 slash 50. 
the last issue of Kelly Thompson's um, 50 issue run, which is crazy. 50 issues it's is a long crazy. run. Yeah. Yeah. And it was uh, good. And this, the, this was basically just, you know, a pearl, uh, epilogue. You know, nothing yeah. major happens here. She's dealing with the fallout of most recent the most recent story where her uh, sister, half sister, that Cree. I don't. I, she, never, I I've forgotten how oh, she oh. came to be. The one who the Ronan the Accuser, but but her name is Lori. So yes, which is a weird yes. name for a Cree accuser to have. Is your mom a Cree accuser? No. <laughs> No, no, not not Laurie the Cree Accuser. She's still alive. She's in this issue. Right. It's oh, right. Oh, no. Binary. So binary, binary was birthed of Carol's Her, energy. Right, right, right. So, it was like, so she's a sister, but really she's like like uh, energy waste that was sentient. <laughs> and she got killed in the last uh, episode, episode or, or arc. Yes. And so she, Carol is feeling a lot of guilt and her friends are trying to help you know, led by Spider Woman, her best friend, who first tries to get Lori, the accuser, to go, you know, help her go beat up some bad aliens. That doesn't help. So then they return to her like one hundred million dollar apartment in New York City. Um that I mean, she deserves that. That I don't not that she does it, but I don't know how she's affording it. Unless she Tony's buying apartments for everybody. If you um, dated Tony and or fought him in a civil war, he's probably gonna hook you up. I guess. Maybe it's in the tower. Maybe it's that's how, how they though. roll. So they throw her a party, and that's really fun because there's you know basically all the major characters from from the fifty issue run show up. The X Men are there. She Hulk's there, and uh, that doesn't cheer. And Miss Miss Marvel, who's still alive here, is here as well. So they get to have yeah. a little Miss Captain and, Marvel, and you know what? Miss Marvel, Captain Good. Marvel scenario. Yeah, no, it's, I'd, it's I'd rather like you, like it would ruin the entire thing if they were like, let's take a moment to remember the other one who's dead. Yeah, you know, like it would be, right. be too bad. It's temporarily I liked, dead. I liked that. Like the whole thing was that she knew all of her friends were trying to help her, but she also was pretty sure it wasn't going to work, and she had to try not to resent them or be annoyed with them because she knew that they were trying to help, and a that she needed help, but she didn't want help, and so right. she, you know, she has the party, and she doesn't want to be at a party, but she can appreciate it, but she still goes and hides somewhere else, and. I th- it's it's interesting. Uh, I don't know if it's. I don't think it's talking out of school, but you're not going to see Kelly Thompson at a convention, mm. for the most part. Like she doesn't do them. Right. She doesn't like them. She doesn't want to be at the party. So you go ahead and put that together right mm. now. Uh, you know, it, it, again, none of that's in a bad way or whatever. I think the super awkwardness of meeting Doctor Strange in an alley, and I went, oh yeah, did they, they sleep together? Little, yeah, yeah, yeah. They totally did. <coughs> Right. Um, Steve. Yeah, Steve. That's maybe the first time I said that. Yeah. So it, it you know, we sort of got a, 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 a wind through the fifty issues here, including a sort of climax where she has a conversation with Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch was on the tribunal in one of the arcs where she was being judged. That terrific arc where she was mm-hmm. uh, in that sort of uh, fantasy setting, not fantasy, more like sci-fi fantasy setting. And you know, gets to the point where. You know, she has sort of she has it out with her fears. She tells her fears to Scarlet Witch, and mm-hmm. Scarlet Witch lies her fears, and so she feels a little bit better. And that's the, the whole thing is that like she has all the. I mean, I feel like the theme is she has all of this power, but she isn't doesn't trust herself with it. But she does, and she goes back and forth, and she gets angry. You know, everybody cares about her, but also if she gets too angry, she could cause a big problem for existence. Right. Um, and I, I just like that that's all sort of swirling around. By the way, um, first page is she's in a church uh, in the city in, uh, I guess, like a like a AA meeting. It's not AA. It's like a uh, grieving, like like you've lost somebody meeting. Oh, right, it sounds okay. like somebody's always talking after Billy passed. So it's a like a grief, uh, shared grief. You know, I don't I can't think of the words, but um, and she, she she's squeezing her fist together and she's just listening to these people talk and she explodes up towards the, you know, the ceiling and pops through the the roof of the old church. And I just thought I was like, that's a really beautiful sort of two page sequence in, in sort of her, you know, rage, sadness and whatever she, she wants to be happy. She just can't work it out. She's, she's trying. Um, but the good news is, is that somebody took her boyfriend, Rhodey, uh, de-aged him, buffed that fucker out, smoothed him right up. Uh, he's no longer a hard bitten soldier, you know, maybe middle-aged sort of, but nope. 
No, he's he's on that he's on that show, uh, Netflix. Bridgerton. Uh, yeah, he's a Bridgerton character now. He's handsome. He's very. He's too handsome. He's too pretty. Uh, then the book the book ends with her fixing the roof that she busted in that first sequence. So yeah. it was a really nice capper. It was a little, little longer. I think it was like ten pages yeah, it was. longer. And beautiful art. Uh, two, Javier Pena and David Lopez did the art. Um, the main art was was it Javier Pena was the main artist? Uh, I think most it, of I, it? I think it changed around. Well, it's two I artists. The one artist did the part where she leaves right. and goes to the. Um, I really the liked Doctor Strange part, but I really liked the drawing and you know acting and all that. But some of the production of the color I didn't love. Um, I, I, like the color palette was really good, but it was just a little smoothed out and glossy in places that I didn't mm-hmm. love. It looks like um, oh Christ, it looks like other people who do just stuff like this, and it it almost works. But it, it, I kept kind of noticing it. I kept noticing the photoshop crud on people's faces for shines but every time i looked at the actual drawings themselves i was like oh that's great yeah really 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 great art Mm -hmm. um i I like this style where it's a very thick heavy line Mm -hmm. we'll talk about that later in the show but um i always it just it just it's it's got a nice comic book quality to it where you're never forgetting what you're looking at which is a comic page and the the faces are all interesting and intricate i I also like that there's a, a theme in here where she is very concerned with the next generation of heroes. I really like there's a little subplot about Hazmat. Yeah. You know, like, she's, watch her. She's great. Not ready yet, but, you know, keep an eye on her. And just the way that that conversation had, was had, it was not straightforward. Uh, that was really interesting. And, and you know, she's a character who I don't know a heck of a lot about. I remember she was in that great Avengers, Avengers Arena. Avengers Arena, yeah. Yep. Um, which was really good. And and she's been in this. This is like a really great sort of gathering of female superheroes uh, having adventures together, I thought, yes. in a way that was organic, I guess. It didn't feel like, like, we'll just stick them all together. It doesn't matter why or whatever or, you know, but they all had relationships with each other. And they would. And in this. Yeah. But this is like this is shared. It's the it's the family version of these mostly single women, certainly childless women, except for Spider Woman. But they make that work. Um you know, it's kind of like professional women who have got their support group of each other. <laughs> it's a really strong book. Um, I've, you know, impressive run. You don't get 50 issue runs from a single writer anymore. And, uh, you know, good for Kelly Thompson, who's now moving over at least partially to DC. But great run. great, And also mm-hmm. great single issue. If you haven't necessarily read it, you could also just read this issue and, you know, get a nice little Captain Marvel story. I think if you're if any of this sounded interesting, I think it's probably worth it going in wherever comic shop your your library. <coughs> Pick up the first trade or two and just sort mm-hmm. of you know give yourself. If you're looking for that kind of experience, this might be a good one for that. Yeah, we talked about you know being excited when Clobber Time comes out. But I was also excited whenever it was Captain Marvel week. Me too. So. Yeah, it's the same way that yeah, like when Spider Woman was coming out regularly. Like ooh. Um, I, I like. I really love the Spider Woman character that is, as she has come to be in the post Bendis world. She's really fun too. So as the best friend of the protagonist here, it's all good. Green Lantern two from Jeremy Adams and Hermonico, and <laughs> such a such a weird book. I I really love the Hal Jordan part of the book. I uh-huh. really cannot find myself caring at all about the John Stewart part, and then. At the end of this new book that just launched, we are now taking a side trip into the Night Terrors takeover that's happening in DC that no one I know cares about. It made me so annoyed. I am not going to be reading any of it. Up until this point, the entire flight that Hal Jordan this this book the first I I don't I don't dislike the the John Stewart bit. Um, I don't. It's, it doesn't resonate with me the same way, uh, but it's fine. But the first bit, the Hal, Hal Jordan, I just feel like we haven't hung out with Hal Jordan like this in a really long time. This is the Hal Jordan I've been waiting for for like yeah. a decade. This, this, this is Hal Jordan story. Like, like the best thing in this was, 
for, for some reason he ended up in the mail room, which is ridiculous <laughs> because he crashed a drone or something like that. Right. Um, which is which is stupid. And I was like, there's no way that would happen. But uh, uh, Kilowog gives him a pep talk, and Carol walks into her private hangar to see the jet, and and who is it but Captain Hal Jordan standing there uh, to fly the plane? She's like, you were in the mail room, and then and then we see the 24 hours that it took him to go from the mail room to flying the plane, and it was just it was all done in one page. It was silly, uh, it was fun, and then every you know. All the stuff that happens after that when he's on the plane is great. Yeah, like he, and, he, he, yeah, go ahead. yeah. Go, no, you're good. He takes over the controls. He's acting cool to meet Carol's new boyfriend and 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 Carol's new boyfriend. She likes him because Hal's yeah. a charmer, you know, or he likes him, you know. Yeah. But he's looking in the back and he 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 wiggles the plane to make uh, him spill a drink and then puts. Uh, oh, th- which brings me to another point. In this, this Hal Jordan uses ring constructs. He, yeah. he makes little vice grips, you know, to hold the door mm-hmm. shut and hold the boyfriend in there, sits down, you know, and like, you know, I'm a nice guy, you know, like all, all of that was great. And then you flip the page and there's ghosts in the air. Fine. Whatever. That's the villain. But then it says continued in night, night terrors, Green Lantern. Number one. I was like, number one. This is number two. <laughs> Yeah. I was so like, you want to talk about being taken from a high to a low? So in that context, going into the John Stewart story, I was like, fine, at least this isn't stupid shit. Uh, <laughs> I, like, just I don't, don't know what's going on in it. No, no I idea. don't. I don't know. I can't follow it. It says another time in the place. It's not our John Stewart. It's certainly not our guy Gardner. And I don't have a problem with multiverse stories, but I'm just having a hard time. Why is it here? Just it just. It's just I don't care. I I don't know. It hasn't it hasn't given me a reason to care. That's what I'm the saying. The Hal Jordan part isn't a full length. How many pages? Let's see. It no, goes. It yeah, yeah, it is full. It's a, yeah, because the book is thirty plus pages, so they, right. they have, it's extra. All right, so I'm getting that. Was it six bucks? <laughs> so, I, I what I love about Hal is that he can be many kinds of Hal. Mm-hmm. We can have the really cool. You know, Chuck Yeager Hal from New Frontier. We can have the sad sack Hal that Tom Cater so, you know, beautifully chronicled in his podcast, the toy tail salesman Hal. And here we have sort of all those Hal's where he is trying to be cool. It's just not working for him. And it's, so he ends up having to work in the mailroom, works his way up to fly, being the pilot for the, you know, private jet that Ferris Hair, Hair owns. And he's trying to get back into it. And in the meantime, Living that cool bachelor life in a trailer by the sea with Kilowog. Kind of like Jim Rockford. That's like, that's like the Gen X movie fantasy. Tr- fantasy trope that shows up in everything. Chris Pratt yeah. in the Jurassic Park movies had one of those. Listen, does deep he, down, he's, he's, all of us just want to be living in a trailer we all, that overlooks the sea. We all want to be. Martin Riggs in Lethal Weapon. Jim Rockford in the Rockford Files. We, we all just want to be. Matthew McConaughey actually <laughs> lived that. Matthew McConaughey actually did it. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's it's about freedom, man. Just freedom. <laughs> you gotta understand out there. There's no <laughs> there's no one to tell you what to do. I felt I felt like you did. I was like, wait, what are we? What? Yeah. And so, and I think that's gonna happen in all the DC books because it's sort of taking over everything. And you know, whatever, it's fine. But the point is, I was really enjoying the Hal Jordan stuff. I and I like as I was reading, I remember like the last issue. I was like, "Yes, this this is fine. It's okay." And it solidifies here. I see what they're doing, and I'm like, "Oh, this is what this is what Ryan Reynolds should have done in that movie." Maybe it was. I don't even know. Um, why not? Why not launch the book after the event? I don't. I mean, that's that's the thing. Like, I shouldn't. It shouldn't affect my enjoyment of the book. But it seemed so boneheaded but then again the other side of it seeming boneheaded is that it probably isn't from a business standpoint because no one cares about this stuff like you and i do i mean i get it they don't want to reintroduce you don't you don't reintroduce him into this this event you want to in his number one but it doesn't help things when you're launching a book you're two issues in and then you take a two-month sidestep into another book after issue (laughs) four six give him a full arc Whatever. Two was too <sighs> early. Can I tell you about, you know what? That John Stewart story is by Phil, Philip Kennedy Johnson. Yeah, I know. 
It's a guy I go to. I don't get it. Doesn't seem like him. Sort I don't it out, know. Johnson. Johnson Kennedy. <laughs> so there's no well, name that he has that you can't say out loud like a '60s office guy <laughs> and not have it fit. Johnson, my office. <laughs> Philip, the great um, British bump off number three from Dark are you, Horse. Are you reading this? Yeah, we haven't talked about this together yet. So um, this was the patron pick uh, the week I did a solo show, the first issue yes. of it, uh, and and I remember being like, I remember seeing it. Uh, when I went to go get my books, and I thought, I don't think I want to read that. And I thought, well, I'll take a look at it. And then it was Pager Pick, so I had to. And then, like, despite myself during the first <laughs> issue, I found myself really enjoying it, even though there are a lot of tropes in here that I see other people do not very well, and they annoy me. But this was done well enough, just unique enough, that it it sort of caught me. And I was like, I think I like this. And then with each subsequent issue, I, I, well, I mean, there's only been two others, but it, like it grew on me. And so this week when I saw it came out, I was like, ooh, Great British Bump Off. So this is the murder mystery at, at a great, great British Bake Off type show. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I've watched a couple of seasons and I really like it. I just haven't watched, you know, I'm not, I've never, I've never seen it. I know what it is. I, I, I don't, I don't, I just, it's really I just enjoyable. Never, yeah. Um, my, pro- I mean, first of all, so this is John Allen on story, Max Saren on art. It's wonderful cartooning. It's yes. really just top level cartoon work. I, I don't know the story. I have two problems with one. The main character is really annoying, and two. Uh, you and I both worked in television. This is <laughs> this is no no TV show runs like this. Not even close. Not even in the wheelhouse of this. I'm but I'm fine with that. I whatever. think that it's it cartoon world, everything's kind of ridiculous. The characters are pretty disparate and interesting and very modern, I think. I don't know. It like there's something cartoonish about it. There's something amped up that it's I like. I've never watched a I've never watched one of these shows, but I know what it is. And instantly mm. like I can hear it. I can hear the British, you know, mm-hmm. disdain and and for for the other people in some cases, and and the and the embarrassment and well, all of that. That is not what this show is in real life. I mean, in real life, it's all about the opposite. It's like the feel good show. People aren't right. mean to each other. And they well, what's aren't. interesting is that I was talking to you is that I've been complaining about. I only watched like one reality show. Only watched Top Chef, and the last couple seasons have been super boring because they're all nice to each other. And right. I'm like, this is not good TV because it used to be. I'm telling you, when the Gen X people were on. They didn't like each other. There was assholes, and everybody's learned to be nice to each other, which should be a good thing, but it makes shitty television. Yeah. And in this, it's more like that. It's very – I mean, someone's killing somebody else, so there has to be some gun. <laughs> well, the, in I this show, I mean, not, not, not that this is about the TV show, but the TV show is more about the drama of right. having to bake these things with no prep or no idea what you're baking. You know, like, you got to make this pie. You've never done it before. You know, and they don't give you instructions or, or – just the ingredients list, but no, no amounts like that. That kind of that's the drama. Is trying to, is that stuff? I think but, it's the old lady, and it's incredibly nicely judgmental judges. Anyway, yes. um, it's beautiful and it's it's fun. I'm not dislike it. I just you know it's the, not, the main it's not like oh my god, little, she's a little she's a little too much. But Sadie, uh, but I think that all the characters is. acknowledge that she's too much. Yeah, yeah. They, she's the she's the uh, kooky one. She's yeah, the quirky one, quirky, I believe, quirky. But I enjoy it. Yeah. It's it's not it's not like any of the books that I'm reading. Uh, you know, it's it's a send up, but it's not annoying. I'm genuinely interested in knowing who done it. You yeah. know, I'm I'm invested. It's just I I mean at, at the very least, it's beautiful to look at. Sure, for sure. Yeah, it's fun. Though. I mean, you're no all those things that are correct. I don't know who any of the people are in this. The... I've heard of the letter before. Oh, the creative team. I think they did that that book, uh, Giant Days. That might not be the name. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, been sick you know, for three I weeks. stopped reading comics for those three years. I didn't. So let's uh, let's get to the big update, the big announcement. We, we tease the top of the show. This is our Patreon update. We've been working with this for a while. So, long term listeners of the show will know we've been on Patreon now for seven years. You are shitting me. Seven years we've been doing uh, Patreon. As a way for our listeners who feel like they can or want to so to support the show, and we're 
extremely appreciative of everyone who's ever been a patron or, or even for a dollar, even for an, a one month, whatever. If you've supported us, we appreciate it because, you know, this is no longer Josh and I's full-time job. It was for a while, but it's not. So it's something we have to do in the margins, in the in the crevices of our lives, with our day jobs and families. And and it uh, it's not cheap and it costs us in time and we you know, we have bills and we have, you know, like I'm, my iPad is, is starting to show signs of it need to be replaced. So if things like that happen, you know, th- that's how the patrons help out, help keep the show going. As we say, the lights on, all that stuff. And it's not inconsiderate. And also for our time, because it's, you know, right now I could be having dinner, but I'm not. I'm doing the show. And so I this get is sort it. Of, OK, you'd rather be with somebody. I'm very hungry. Always with this. <laughs> so we, we again, we just appreciate everybody. So. Um, at the top at the, at the top of the year, like a, like some kind of asshole. Top uh, of the year, tease. When the year started off, we had announced some new stretch goals. We were very excited about, and the, the week we announced them, Patreon uh, also announced they were making changes to the way that, the way they run things, and so they removed those stretch goals that we spent a lot a lot of time coming up with, and that was um, unfortunate because it was a great way to uh, spur membership, and make people excited. That you know those stretch goals unlocked uh, our patron hangouts. And our YouTube, you know, putting shows back up on YouTube and our media explode, talk explode, book explode shows, all those shows were unlocked as stretch goals on the, on the Patreon. And those are no more. So we figured since it's been seven years and they were moving the goals, it was, we might as well take a step back and, uh, you know, sort of, you know, take it down to the studs and, and rebuild from the, from the ground up. So this is a, this is a pretty major overhaul of the Patreon. Um, and I can hear the current patrons sort of grinding their teeth right now in anticipation of what's about to happen. So. We think this is going to be fun, and and we think this is going to be good for everybody. And uh, you know, the first thing you need to worry about first. So the first thing is, don't worry. This show is not. You're not losing the show. Nothing is. Nothing is going away. The show will all, always be free. But we'd like to give extra things for people who choose to support the show. So you know, two things will continue to be unlocked. Things will still be things for everyone. But the most important thing is to know this: this show will never go away in terms of uh, paywall or anything. So here are the things we're unrolling or unveiling. Uh, we're rolling out the new merchandise program. It's got a whole bunch of new merchandise for you as a patron to hopefully enjoy. Because who doesn't love merch? Everybody loves. Merch. I fanboyed a flamethrower. The kids <laughs> love this so, one. You know, maybe if you're not, if you're not a patron and you've thought about it, maybe maybe this new merch is interesting and you you want to take it part in in, in, the, in the fun. So here's what here's what happens. Here are the new levels and what you get at each level. And I will explain after this. Uh, how it works exactly but the three dollar per month level our intern level you get to have your name listed on the new i patron thank you page on ifanboy.com we're gonna we're updating that page and three dollar a month pa- uh, patron gets your name on that page the five dollar per month patron the lackey level you get your name listed on the thank you page plus you get thanked on the podcast with the superpower live on the show like we always like to do and you also get access to the ifanboy patron discord at this level everyone at this level and above gets access to the discord server and there's a great community there uh, to become part of if you choose to. At the $10 per month level, the hired goon level, you get all of the above, plus you get an iFanboy sticker uh, for free. And you're and uh, we're super excited to provide an ad-free feed of the show. So, you know, we have ads. Ads help pay the bills as well. But if you don't want to hear the ads, if you become a $10 a month patron, you get to, you, there's a special feed that you'll get access to of the show with no ads. So that's Here's exciting. Here's the thing, Connor. I don't think anyone wants that. Because we are delightful to listen to ads or or no ads. True. So I would say that I, most of the people probably sign up for that and then opt to listen to the ads anyway. You know, there is there's you know there is actually a question I have that is because uh, we'll, we'll, some of the ads are embedded in the show, some aren't. Anyway, we'll figure it out. The point is, all the extra ads those will be gone if you sign up to ten dollar higher level yes. and you choose to listen to them at the fifteen dollar level, which is the nineteen eighties DC Comics Thug level. This is a new level. You get all the thank yous, the Discord access, the the ad free paid podcast feed. Plus, you get an exclusive patrons only mug with the iFanboy logo and a nothing makes sense, nothing matters design nice. from our best. Are you seeing? Are you seeing a DC thug that has a cut off jean jacket? Yes, with no yes, sleeves. Absolutely. Okay, He's just making sure. Yes. So this is that. That's our best selling T shirt, and you get that that logo on the mug with iFanboy's logo on it. That's awesome. At the twenty dollar per month level, the Hydra lawyer level. You get the thank yous, the Discord access, the ad-free podcast feed, plus a Patreon-exclusive poster with the Stay Home and Read Comics design on it that everyone loved during the pandemic. And I sit here as someone getting over COVID. It's still out there. 
it may be still a good idea to stay home and read comics since so you get to put that on the wall. It's always a good idea. And, uh, and, and look at that you, every day. I'm going to give you a line now that a, a Hydra lawyer would say. Ready? Yes. <clears throat> no, Mr. Rogers, I think you'll find it's you who are in trouble. <laughs> what do you think? Is that pretty good? And not because of any kind of death trap. It's because of yeah. uh, some legal paperwork. Yep, yep. So we got another new level for you. The $25 a month level, you, that's the AIM scientist level. You get all the thank yous, the Discord access, the ad-free podcast feed, and you get an exclusive patron t-shirt. Only patrons get this shirt. It's a brand new design. It celebrates you as the newest member of the Junior Jamoke Society Super Patron super patron Club. So you can check the logo out over at patreon.com slash ifanboy. It's a great design. We love it. And we hope the patrons will wear it proudly. It is a fine so, design. Another, another, uh, another new level is a $30 a month level. This is the Parademon level. And you get all the thank yous, the Discord access, the ad-free podcast feed, the Patreon-exclusive design on a tote bag. So you get a tote bag with the Junior Jamoke design on it. So when you go to the supermarket. <laughs> I literally was almost like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you go to the supermarket or the bookstore or whatever with your tote bag, uh, you get to proudly display that you're a member of the Junior Jamokes. And wait, there's more. At the $40 per month level, that's the Doombot level. You get all the thank yous, the Discord access, the ad-free podcast feed. You get a hoodie featuring the Junior Jamoke design. A hoodie. Wow. It's comfortable. It's stylish. And again, you get to show off that you are the Junior Jamoke. So, and finally, it was, like, it, it, was, it was always a joke level until someone called us on it during the pandemic. But then there is, of course, the eccentric benefactor level at $1,000 per month. And you get everything previously mentioned. You get all the merch mentioned. So you get the, you get the thank you. You get the Discord access. You get the ad-free podcast. You get every piece of, piece of merch. And you get to be on, on one episode of the show talking about comics with Josh and I. And that happened once. It could happen again. Have you ever thought about uh, about doing a PBS drive, Connor? Because I think that I think you might have it in you. I've watched many of them in my life. Yeah, I bet so, you have. So this is all pretty exciting. It's great merchandise. We really think it's cool. <laughs> You'll, you receive. So this is how it works. You get the, you get the merch at the level you're supporting after three months of support. So if you join today at the $10 a month level, after three months at the $10 level, you get your, that's actually no merch. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. At the $15 level, you get your mug uh, after three months. You have to, at the $30 level, after three months at $30, you get your tote bag. And so the, if you're an existing patron, you're like, what the hell with me? With the existing patrons starting today, after three months, whatever level you're at, you can you'll get your merch. It gets shipped to you automatically. You don't have to do anything. You're already in the system. It's already it's all set up. And if I'm you know, got to pick a size. If you want, well, yes, but if you want, you know, different merch, you can change your levels to sign up and you know get to, for different merch. So merch it up. You can bounce around the levels depending on how much you know a piece of merch you might want. So if you want to change your level, you can go to Patreon.com, adjust that, make sure you get all the stuff you want. All that starts today over Patreon.com/slash/ifanboy. If you're, you know, thinking about being a patron, you can sign up today. If you are a pay- current patron, you want to change your level to get a different piece of merch, you can do that today. And again, we make a lot of jokes, but uh, the, the the show would not be here probably very certainly if not for the patron support. And we thank everyone, every single patron throughout the course of time. Um, in the seven years, there's been over a thousand patrons, which is incredible. Yes, it is. It's a f- small fraction of the listenership, but we appreciate anyone who li- who listens in the f- at the first place. Anyone listens, and we d- we doubly appreciate anyone who's ever supported the show. We thank everyone who does that. Uh, we do appreciate it. And just so this isn't all lovey dovey. If you do happen to be at the level of an eccentric billionaire, yep, and you're just doing five bucks a month, right? I mean, you're wasting. You're wasting your time. Get get all the merch and be on the show. What is that about, dude? Mm-hmm. Don't right. hold out on me. I don't hold back on you. When I think of some dumb thing, dumb thing to say about Dr. Mindbender, I say it. That's my job. <laughs> Your job <laughs> is largesse, specifically towards me, and I guess Connor, because he's here too. Patriot, pat- patronage. That's the name of the that's the name of, yes. of the game. That's where it came from. So thank you. Again, thanks to all the patrons. <clears throat> thanks to all the patrons and thanks to all the support you've shown us over the years. Um we will obviously not be reading this every time, but you know, no. this was this is I, a lot of work, and we appreciate everyone who considers supporting the show in any I way. Feel as possible. if 
if I was on PBS, they would ask <laughs> me not to come back the next year. We mm. really appreciate your he- or the, we really appreciate your help. Um, but we've decided to go in a different direction, Josh. If you could not be here when we do this next time, I think that would be best. It happens. Yeah. It happens. Oh, I've been I've been fired from a lot of public television <laughs> drives. <laughs> Uh, let's hey, move on let's talk you, more comics to talk about you didn't read the giant i don't even know how to say this cockju cockju i guess that it makes seems, sense given seems did you read it bad no i haven't read it but saying it out loud all right all right seems so like this is this is all right so you read a comic book you see it's it's a kaiju it's whatever it yeah. is they, maybe that's i i thought that was just a weird way of spelling it whatever jerry duggan writes it scott koblish uh does the does the art hi-fi colors um and joe sabino on letters and it's a kaiju story it's three issues and in this last issue the main character who is separated from his wife talks Mm -hmm. about that a lot goes out there in a robot (coughs) suit and we think he's won the day and saved san francisco from sheer i think it's san francisco whatever the point is and i'm gonna spoil this book for you because what i'm about to say will let you know if you want to go pick it up or not Mm -hmm. but he his robot is inadvertently turned into a giant monster sex toy Mm. the monster gets off and therefore dreamily walks back into the ocean because he's sated now because the monster has tried to fuck a lot of things when he (laughs) came into the city and then there's a lot of dick jokes and fucking jokes uh, from out of nowhere, by the way, this was not. Well, look at the name; it's Kakju. It is. It is. Yeah. I would have thought this was a Tim Seeley book, not a Jerry Duggan book. It but was I can also... very funny and unexpected at the end. Totally base, broad humor. Um, and then at the end, it's like it looks like Jerry Duggan's going to be doing a spate of books uh, for the folks at uh, at Image. Um, and they said, like at the end, there was a little bit that was uh, very self self referential, and you know they're in it, like like. Um, the creators and they're like, Oh, we're going to do a serious book next. And so then there's a couple of ads for, for things like that. But you know what? Three issues, amazing art, totally light, you know, light adult humor, nerd shit. Uh, it was fun. I I'm glad I stuck with it. I thought the last issue was worth it. It was very funny. Second coming Trinity. Number three, um, in the last issue, Jesus was babysitting sunspot, sun, sunspot, sun fell out the window and that's when we find out that Sunspot's son has superpowers, so because he didn't, he didn't die, he flew away. Shocking. And so, in this issue, we have Jesus feeling guilty. God's yelling at him for being, you know, uh, lackadaisical, bad babysitter. And so we get a an extended flashback to when Jesus was a kid, and uh, he's sort of like, oh, damn it, I should look this up. What is that episode of Twilight Zone where the kid? He's got powers, and the whole town's afraid of him. Oh, with uh, with uh, Billy Moomy. Uh, yeah, it's a very nice thing you did. It's basic. That's basically what Jesus was like as a kid. <laughs> he, uh, you know, because kids can be assholes, and he uh, he kills his neighbor kid who's annoyed him, and then he brings him back. But then he he the, the, the town's yelling at him, so he takes away all their mouths, and eventually they just become like, "Oh, Jesus, isn't it a nice day out? Aren't you great?" Like that kind of thing. It's like, "Oh, jeez." And and then in the present day, uh, uh, Sunspot, who's babysitting, he has, he has to go save the Batman character from being dropped in acid. And so he does. And the bad guy's getting away. So he's got his baby Bjorn with his son in it. And he takes the kid and throws the, throws him at the bad guy and knocks him over because the kid's indestructible. Sure. So he's like having a you know a boomerang. Um, That's a very Garth Ennis kind of thing. It's a very this you know this book of all the books Mark Russell does as we know you know you know because you interviewed him he's a, he's a theologian. This is the book that really allows him to sort of delve into that side of his uh, interest. And, the, and a the, lot of times when you say somebody is a theologian writing fiction, you're like, oh, you know, like he knows a lot about it. No, I th- I th- he's, he's actually qualified. Right. And this is great. And this, the Bible. This issue with, with the flashback to Jesus is, was really, really terrific as a scary sort of kid with powers. Very good. And then speaking of... Captain Marvel earlier, who has been racked with guilt. We have the Amazing Spider-Man 921. Now that Miss Marvel has died, Peter is feeling guilty. And uh, now we've got Ed McGinnis on art joining Zeb Wells, who has who was here which earlier. Was, which is great back. looking. Yeah, really, really, really good looking. Black Cat's trying to cheer him up. That's not working. She, I feel like she's not trying to cheer him up in the right way. 
Um, I see what you're saying here, but we're going to move on. Uh, great Dr. Octopus. I love when classic Dr. Octopus shows up and he's got some issues with his legs. I thought this was really fun. This can, this was, it was this really fun. It, at first I was like, really first I was like, Oh no, it's sad Peter, <laughs> it, which by the way has to happen. Totally makes sense. This is what they had to do. Um, mm-hmm. but great Dr. Octopus, like you said. And yep. then, uh, and, and then, then we go to Norman Osborn again. And I was like, this character is amazing. <laughs> Like at first you can be like, oh, he shouldn't turn this way. No, I love that Norman Osborn can be anything. He's like Doctor Doom at this right. point. He's whatever he needs to be, and there's so much baggage behind it, and you can like put it in front of you or yank it away or whatever. Um, so that we find out we're over at Ravencroft, and we they think a villain is dead, and there's this beautiful wide angle shot uh, of it of her not being dead, and and yeah. you know like like the coming through the door, and it's really scary. And then the last page reveal of uh the disused first generation doc dr octopus arms who uh dr octopus had had tried to dismantle comes sadly to j jonah jameson's door right. like a lost puppy and i was like that was fucking brilliant i was so happy about that last page i thought it was great and the, it, I just, gorgeous really gorgeous really big action-packed issue that ed mcginnis excels at some big action splash pages Mm-hmm. You no, know, he fights the shocker in the beginning. That's that's how Black Cat tries to cheer him up in the same way that uh, that uh, Spider Woman tried to cheer up Captain Marvel. And you know, Ed McGinnis is you know it seems like toned down a little bit. Like everyone's not super bulky. It's just yeah, but really he's got beautiful. it. He's still it's it's really like nice. His, his dog Ock is great. He's no neck. <laughs> so good. I love Doc Ock. Um. Real quick, I'm looking through the solicits and I see uh, a little sci-fi short story anthology um, called Xeno, X-I-N-O, number one from Oni Press. And I was like, I didn't think they even did issues anymore. Um, <laughs> I don't think they did for a while. But uh, what we, but what caught me is that there's a story in here uh, with story and art by Phil Hester. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's a story by Christopher Condon of That Texas Blood. And I was like, oh, cool. I would like to read that. The first two stories are there's four by- stories. Yeah, the, so so the, the the last two stories are by those two people, and the first two yeah. stories are by uh, Melissa Fior and Daniel Melissa Irizarry. Flores. Did I get it wrong? Yeah, you said Fior, F- Melissa Flores. Whatever. Um, well, it's a pretty big difference. It's true, but I'm going to be flipping about it because I screwed mm-hmm. up. And then uh, Jordan Thomas and Shaky Kane. Shaky Kane, I remember some image yeah. book, Drew, because who forgets that name? Anyway, I was really looking forward to it. I liked the first two stories a lot with yes. people I didn't know, and I yes. didn't like the second two stories with people I did know. A hundred percent, I agree with you. A hundred percent, I picked this up as well. Uh-huh. And speaking of Twilight Zone, I thought this was a very much like Twilight yeah. Zone-y. Um, the first story from Melissa Flores and Daniel Rosari is about a blind man who gets these implants yeah. and he can see, but he can see on different spectrums than humans, and so he sees like these invisible aliens all around us at all times and it drives him crazy i thought yeah. that was it was a don't, you strong know it, it we, we don't have to go through the whole thing no but it was a really fun little sci-fi uh you know twisted tales kind of thing with four short stories i think the whole thing's 30 something pages yep it's it was great i don't there's not enough comics like this uh if oni's gonna do stuff like this more often i'm really happy about it great talent on it all even though i didn't love the other stories like they're really well done good looking phil hart phil hester he's such a good artist like he's mm-hmm. so good, um, and uh, I could always deal with more of that. Even though I didn't love that story, but whatever. Uh, check this out if this sounds good to you. This is absolutely worth checking out. I think. So before we move on to the uh, patron pick, it's important to note, Josh, that one of the creators on that issue was a patron of ours. No shit. Yep. Jordan. Jordan. Great story, Jordan. Jordan Thomas, Rabbit Trap. That was that. At first, I wasn't sure, and then by the end, of the end reveal, I was like, okay. I really liked how that story was built. Cool. Yep. So good job, Jordan. That was fun. Um, but the issue was, I, I enjoyed the issue as a whole, I, as, even though I agreed with you, two were not so good by the mm-hmm. two creators I was really looking forward to. Um, it was really still fun to read as a thing that you don't normally get to read. Yep. All right. Patron pick time. Patreon.com slash iFanboy. In addition to all the fun merch you get, you get to vote to add a book to the rundown. That wasn't lucid, but every patron gets to vote to add a book to the rundown. And this week, the overwhelming favorite by a three to one margin was Void Rivals, number one from Image Skybound, written by Robert Kirkman, 
art by Lorenzo De Felici, Mateus Lopes on colors, and Russ Wooten on letters. All right. So before we get started, we give a spoiler warning mm-hmm. on this show for a reason. But at this point, I would like to say to you that mm-hmm. if you have any interest in picking this up and you yeah, don't part. want it spoiled, don't listen to this part because I did not have it spoiled and I was all the better for it. I thought that was that was a much better thing. And it's it's interesting. I'll let I'll let folks behind the curtain a little bit. Yeah. Uh there are uh there are previews for a lot of books that we get. Press um, press press review press, press, Right. So we get them and we read them. So download this one. And actually most of the time Kirkman books are not available. You have to buy them. Um uh fine, whatever. Uh but they had omitted the last seven pages of it and we were like, what the hell? Yeah, I was like, I was, well, I was reading it and I got I was I got to the page and it was like page redacted and I was like what? And then I kept scrolling page redacted page redacted and I was like they 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 redacted the last seven pages. How am I supposed to review this? But let's 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 respect the game here. Oh, I, I always that- respect Kirkman's commitment to trying to find ways in this internet daily world to get his books out spoiler free. Um, I he's tried all kinds of ways to do it. This, this one almost it. made it. It got big time spoiled on the internet about a, two days before it came oh. out. But, but uh, I had no idea, and I even was almost spoiled. I just didn't realize it. Yeah, um, you were spoiled. You just didn't know what the spoiler meant. Yeah, so like it all came together after the. But either way, wh- whatever. Um, yeah, let's talk about the book. So Void Rivals open. And, and, did you read the little bit at the? Oh no, there was an interview with him I read after that explains his thoughts behind this, and I'll tell you after we're done with this. So yeah, I didn't. So so Void Rivals opens up with um, an alien whose ship is oh, alien. Some you know, I guess an alien. His ship is crashed on some planet, and he's he's got a little hand that's also like a ro- robot assistant. It's literally one of his hands. It's kind of like having a mother box for a hand, and uh, he has to survive. He, he gets a medical kit. He repairs himself. And uh, finds another ship, uh, which is great because this ship's been damaged and needs parts. So he finds another ship. Turns out there's another alien who's also been crashing this planet. Turns out they are rival aliens. And so they fight. And then they realize they shouldn't be fighting. They should try to figure out a way to get off the, pl- off the, off the planet. And uh, so they try to take the pieces of their two ships together to build one ship that works. And when they turn the power source on, it blows their ship up. And so they think, oh, fuck, we're stuck on this planet. And until they, so the one alien, the woman, the female alien goes off on her own and comes running back and says, oh my God, you got to see this thing I just found. I can't believe it. And Josh, why don't you take it from there? Jetfire transforms after being buried in the sand <laughs> for millions of years and flies away. And he transforms because he's, tra- he's a transformer because he's Jetfire. Right. Do you notice how I didn't have to hesitate in telling you his name? It's not because I remember reading it. It's because I know that's Jetfire. And I went, fuck me, this is a Transformers comic? <laughs> I have never, I have never seen anything like this happen. Well, that's so, this is what I found interesting. In the interview he did with Heidi McDonald on, on The Beat, he said, uh, so first of all, the big the big news is now Skybound has the rights to Transformers and G.I. Joe comics. So they're going to be doing those. So he said two years ago, Hasbro approached him about pitching for the rights. And he thought... Well, I, if I'm going to do it, I want to do something really interesting and different with them. And so he thought, you know, what if I was reading a Mark Miller comic and, and it's just about these characters, these new characters, and they're having an adventure. And in the middle of the book, the Smurfs show up. He's like, well, that blow my mind. And so he's like, what I wanted to do with this was tell the story about these two new characters and not tell you in the cover. And then in the middle of the this book, the fucking Transformers show up and and blow Josh's mind. And that's exactly and not what And not like as a... Like a, a a a like a joke. Th- it's not like yeah. uh, satire. It's not no. like oh, these represent the Transformers. They're it's the Transformer. Yeah, crazy. And the thing is, he's right that the st- I was into the story without it. The Transformers, hundred you know? percent. I mean, it's I, it's not a new idea. It's a, it's an well worn idea of people yeah. from opposite sides stranded somewhere having to survive. But it was really well done, and the Lorenzo Di Felici art, perfect, uh, really terrific. And of course, we find after Transformer leaves that they they take off their helmets and they are basically the same race yeah. with, with different jewels in their forehead. But it's very very sort of Star Trek the original series. Um, I really enjoyed that though. I mean, but it like- was it was fucking cool. And then so 
Void Rivals is, is a book that's going to continue that's set in this new inner intergon universe. So Kirkman is a year younger than us. Uh, yeah. He he grew up on the same things we grew up on. He watched the same cartoons. He read the same comics. And they're doing a Transformers book that Daniel Warren Johnson is writing and drawing. Yeah. And they're doing a G.I. Joe, two G.I. Joe books, Duke and Cobra Commander that Josh Williamson is writing. But all these books are set into, in this shared universe. And, and, and the coup de gras. They're continuing on the old G.I. Joe universe with Larry Hama in its own book. So there's two, they're going to do two continuities here, uh, which is not... You know, not unprecedented. We we really enjoyed those IDW books. And, you know, too late. We enjoyed fifteen them. years ago that they did with G.I. Joe Cobra and G.I. Yeah. Joe Origins and all that stuff. But you know, why not? Let's do it. I'm it is, excited. It is so crazy that Robert Kirkman, with all of his influence and money, let's just say, yeah. you know, like his wealth and ability. This is what he decided to do. And it like 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 when you say like that's ridiculous, but then I think that is so great. Yes. That that's what he decided to do. It's so true. You know what I mean? Like oh, it's yeah. like wow, he's doing the thing that he well, you know, like he's doing the cool thing. It's great. And I love the I love the um I love the ballsiness of trying different formats with different way of telling stories so mm-hmm. you know it's it's pretty i'm sure his financial people didn't love the idea that transformers is not on the cover of this book uh there's no indication this is a transformers comic <laughs> and you just have to go with it and 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 be surprised and i i think this could have been a pick of the week if i hadn't been i was i was spoiled but i think if I hadn't been. This could have been a pick of the week. I However, am shocked by how much I loved that this was done the way it was. Like, I'm shocked. I, mm-hmm. I would like if you told me like put it on paper. Like, Josh, would you like this? I'd be like, no, I don't like that. <laughs> but I did. I was tickled. You can tell the sound of my voice. And I had to try really hard not to say anything to Connor beforehand. Yeah. Uh, because I wanted to have the moment on the show. But, I'm glad uh, you were tickled. I mean, I, I enjoyed it even having a spoil. I thought it was really well done. I thought the I, reveal listen, was strong. I was into the book. <laughs> I was 100% into the book of these two people who thought they hated you. I mean, it's totally like, you know, stock sci-fi Twilight Zone kind of thing. But it's really done yeah. well. Like, yeah, I was really like, well. oh, yeah, Kirkman's a damn good comic book writer. You almost forget that after all of his success and everything. But then there's a there's a there's a. A jet half submerged in the in the sand. And now we found a way out, and that fucker transforms and <laughs> flies away without them. Doesn't even notice them. <laughs> yeah. Just mindful of Cybertron, he's out of there. I was. I'm excited. I mean, I, I I'm I'm glad they're going to keep the GI Joe continuity going. You and I had read the final quote quote final issues of that run at at IDW. Mm. Yep. Whatever that final arc was with the fake snake eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to keep going. That book will continue as long as Larry Hama breathes on this earth. As long as he wants to do it. Yeah. And apparently he's cool with that. But I also like the idea of, you know, wiping the slate and starting a new version of Transformers and G.I. Joe in the shared universe. Mm-hmm. With, you know, because we, like I said, we did, they did that before. We liked it a lot. And he said they're going to, you know, it's not like I'm going to totally change everything. It's just, it's just going to be. He called it the ultimate version, of, you know, the ultimates in the ultimate universe of G.I. Joe and Transformers. Like, mm-hmm. start from scratch, maybe, you know, tell it with the same character. And, and Daniel Warren Johnson is a huge Transformers fan. And mm-hmm. now he's doing a Transformers book. Yeah. And that, issue, that drawing of Optus Prime in the back is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I'm excited. Yeah, it was I'm a excited. good time. So unexpected. Ratings. 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 This is tough. I mean, it's not a five. No. But as, as an experience that we don't get to have all the time. I feel like it was a five experience for you. It was a five experience. It, just in that, like, we read comics. We read so many comics. And so to be surprised about not a thing that happens in the comics, but just everything about a way a comic is produced. Right. Um, yeah. All right. I'm, gonna, I'm taking... I'm- Oh, go ahead. No, you, Taking you go that into account, mm-hmm. we're adding experience, craft, 4.35. Ooh. I was going to go four and a quarter. 
Yeah, I was too. And then I thought it's not quite enough. I don't think it's four and a half. So we we boost it. Sticking with it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you going to read all of the books? <laughs> when you asked me, I don't know about that. We'll see. Oh. I'm not I'm not against it. I don't there's the thing. I don't really like Transformers all that much. I mean like like I like them as an idea, but like yeah. I haven't read all the books. When I do, I get kind of bored with them. Maybe there's a really great one, it's fine. But like I was talking to a friend of mine and he he's the big tra- he's a, you know Transformers to him what GI Joe is to us. Right. And I said something about the show. He goes, that show's not very good. Like, relative to G.I. Joe. Oh, You'll yeah, notice yeah. that people don't talk about that show. Like, they oh, like sure. the idea of it and the experience, and they like the movie. But it's not like G.I. Joe. No, I but I liked the show as a kid. I don't, I've don't. i never seen it since, but I liked it as a kid. Exactly. I, that's the point. I'm excited about a Jenny Warren Johnson book in general, but excited about a Jenny Warren Johnson Transformers book specifically. I'm very yeah, excited Yeah, no, about I'll it. read that. No, I, I mean, yeah, I'll read that. And then I'm excited to see what he does with the, you know, the ultimate versions of these characters, and I'm excited how it all comes together. And I'm I'm interested in this Void Rivals story, so you know I'm into it. He's okay. going to sell five books to me that they weren't selling before. Mm-hmm. So congratulations! Yeah, hundred percent. Patreon.com/slash/fanboy. Every patron votes at a book to the rundown, but at the five dollar or higher level. At, at this moment in time, you get lots of things, but one of the things you get is a uh, thanks on the show in terms in this form of a superpower. Live. Yes. Uh, which brings me to Ron Sharp. And Ron Sharp, stick with me here. Mm-hmm. He will, well, actually, you. Ooh. But it will be informative and useful and entertaining. And it will not be like your typical nerd, well, actually. Whatever, whenever he well actually is you, you're delighted that it happened. It's not like a cold knife in the stomach. No, it's, or, or just some fucking banal shit that a nerd has to tell you that you don't care about well actually <laughs> aragorn really broke his toe there you know mm-hmm. it's not that it makes you go really it brings it brings light enlightenment it brings it brings wisdom it uh it's he well actually is very well changes the whole paradigm of well actually around hmm. mm-hmm. and people enjoy it they are oh, happy to be well actually it's valuable Patreon.com slash FMA. Thanks, Ron, for being a patron. We appreciate it. And if you want a superpower live on the show, the $5 or higher level is the way to go. And we're going to skip the email this week because, uh, you know, we, we've, we talked about a couple of giants of the industry of past recently, George Perez and uh, Tim Sale. But it would be hard to find a bigger giant uh, who, uh, I'll admit, did not realize was still alive in that John Romita passed uh, at age of 93 this past week, who is a legitimate, makes a legitimate claim to be one of the greatest all time comic book creators. And um, it was sad. It was sad. It is, but 93 life well lived. Uh, I hope so. I'm, I guess I'm projecting that, you know, his son goes on to become a well-known, widely respected and beloved comic creator, you know, uses his own name. Uh, when when my wife sort of <laughs> comic book stuff will happen, and mm-hmm. she, like in the mainstream news, and she'll say, hey, "Did you?" I mean, you probably heard, but and I go, "He's amazing." I yeah. go, "He he he." When I was growing up, if I had an image of Spider Man in my head. He was the one who drew it. And you too. If you saw Spider-Man when you were a kid, it was John Romita's version of it. You know, it's oh, one of those. I think, I think yeah, I, I think, you know, in my head, when I think about DC characters, I think of that um, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez art from the 80s. It was on all the all the uh, consumer products. And in my head, when I think of Spider-Man, I still think of Romita. Yeah. And I was talking earlier in the, in the episode about the strong lines on the Captain Marvel art. And God, can you think of an artist who had a stronger, smoother line than John Romita? I don't know. I guess it depends on who inked him. It's just, it just, that was the hallmark of his style was the strong, smooth line. Um, yeah. It was always there. I think, uh, I think one of the things that got it. me is, is I don't know if this displays my ignorance or my whatever, but like, I know that Ditko co-created Sp- Spider-Man. I know mm-hmm. what he brought to it. I understand the significance of it, and I can recognize the art. 
uh, and it's brilliant. But if you're going to ask me, you know, who is the Spider-Man artist, you know, like who, like first thing, the one who defines what it, it's, it's Ramita. And I know he didn't create it. He just came, he did that. He did the comic strip, which means that more people probably saw his Spider-Man, you know, at least up until the point of the movies than anybody else has ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, it, and then, and then I think, uh, former former host of the show Ron had said or as you said I don't know when he was just like oh he's the last of the greats yeah. and I was racking my brain to be like oh my god is that right like is there who's left well, you know for people who were around from that beginning like he was born in 1930 and you know even before the 60s Marvel you know revolution he was doing romance comics at a time when they were extremely popular mm-hmm. And if you go and look up some of his old romance work, it's just beautiful. And in a slightly different style, but still recognizably him. I think the other thing about him, too, that I I really appreciate is that, um, you know, Jack is running the table art wise Mm -hmm. over at uh, at 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 Marvel. And he's a person who not everybody could draw like Jack, obviously, or or necessarily. But to me, he he was doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it like he was like you have Jack over here creating worlds, uh, you know, designing language for comic book. And then Ramita is like, but this is how I draw. And it's a whole different thing. Well, you know, Jack was all about dynamism and action, right? Mm-hmm. And big, bold panels and, you know, writing the rules and re- 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 rewriting the rules. And and Ditko's was weird and weirdness, you know, and awkward it, in the best it, possible way. But. Ramita comes along, and he's smooth as silk. Like it's and it's he's he's got that romance f- and romance. You know, there's there's romance. Of the, the look at the mm-hmm. faces of Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane Watson in those p- comics. There, it's a romantic book, and mm-hmm. you've got that. It, it's a totally different feel and look, but it it elevates Spider Man. You know, it'd be hard. To, it's hard to say elevated beyond Dicko, but it, it elevates Spider Man. Let me ask you this. Um, I think that the most aped cover in the history of comics comics quotes itself all the time is Mm -hmm. probably electra daredevil Mm -hmm. but second next after that spider-man spider-man walking away from the suit in the trash can yeah like that's got to be that's top three iconic comic book images for sure i think um when uh, you had you'd put a post up on the ifanboy instagram and i went through and was like he did all these things Gwen, and that was even you know, that wasn't even all of it. That was just a, I could put ten up. I, it's like you could, you know, how many artists that were still alive could you could you put more than ten iconic images up? And right, I, I tried to mix it up with other things too, but I mean, I could have put way more than that. <laughs> he um, he uh, drew over um, Kirby's layouts on Daredevil, hmm. which is interesting because they have such different styles. It's just it's 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 I mean the biggest of big names and also someone who we we talk about how Ramita Jr. who's done great work in other companies you know Kick Ass and we loved his Superman stuff but he's got Marvel in his veins oh you know yeah Ramita Jr. Ramita Senior didn't really do much beyond Marvel after once the sixties happens because he's like Mister Marvel right I mean almost more than. Like Stan Lee obviously was the face of the mascot, but in terms of people working on the books, like he's he was Mister Marvel. Mm-hmm. The the name Ramita is like <laughs> royalty for that reason. Face it, Tiger, <clears throat> you just hit the jackpot. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know he was art director. I'm sure. Yeah, there was the whole the real the real bullpen stuff there. <sighs> it's you know I just I, it's something you don't think about, but. The art's ingrained in your head, mm-hmm. you know. It's, it's obviously sad for his family and friends, but you know he had a long life and very a, a career that influenced you know so many people that are working today. Did you did you see uh, Chris Eliopoulos, our friend and uh, longtime Marvel letterer? Like he his career started at the very end of the air quotes bullpen. Mm-hmm. And so, like he he crossed over with a lot of these people and and got to meet a lot of them, and mm-hmm. he told like a story, and I don't remember the details. You should look up Chris's Instagram, 
but it was like that um Ramita would come in with audio taped television interviews with celebrities and like somebody told a bad joke and he's laughed his ass off at it an audio taped interview from television <laughs> that's a great story like what a what a strange weird thing to remember about a person it's great He'd bring them in to play for people well, no like to listen to while he was working so he 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 developed the early podcast i well no he just pirated audio but right but like the <laughs> idea of it of yes, listening yes. to these conversations while you work sure yes absolutely you know could you, it's, it's it was sad news but you know great life and uh he has a legacy and a son who still is still going strong um so pour one out for John Romita senior if you if you got one cuz he helped build this whole thing we're doing mhm contactfanboy.com that's where you can write in for email questions if you'd like to do that you can also write in for a media split show let's quickly get out of here and talk about we got a busy busy schedule ahead of us uh so this week, we may have a Flash review show. Again, it'll depend on my ability to go out to the movies. So my sickness may have blown up our whole movie reviewing schedule, but we hope to have a Flash review show. In two weeks, we'll have our next Media Explode show. That's where we're going to talk about the end of Ted Lasso, Barry, Succession, and The Flash. In three weeks, fingers crossed, Josh might have a very exciting talk explode, which we're not going to tell you who it is until it's in the can. We've, but We've already said too much. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, and hopefully, I'm hoping it happens. In four weeks, we're gonna have our book explode show where Josh and I are gonna review it's, it's Lonely at the Center of the Earth by Zoe Thurgood. It's a multi Eisner nominated book, it came out last year. Memoir from Image Comics published it, and then we're excited to talk about that. So that's in four weeks. So you've got four weeks to get on with us. It's it's Lonely at the Center of the Earth. In five <laughs> weeks, another media explode. Who knows what that'll be about? In six weeks, oh, I'm sorry, uh, in an unknown time. We will eventually get to the Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse review, which got delayed because of my illness. And then there'll also be a Justice League War World animated review at some point then, too. So we'll figure all of this out. There's a lot of shows I, in the next. Just the, 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 I'm going to have to go see Spider-Verse again okay, so that I'll be able to talk about it because I don't want to lose anything that I had or any of my, my uh, enthusiasm. Well, I'm hoping, I'm feeling better. I'm hoping by the time this show comes out, well, that's not true because I'm I'm at a wedding this weekend, but I'm hoping this week to see both The Flash and Spider Man. Maybe we could do a if twofer. You just leave the wedding. Would anyone notice? <laughs> yes, unfortunately, yes. All right. Not unfortunately, because I'm I'm excited to be there, and I'd like the people who are getting married, and it's a family <laughs> wedding. But that would be I would I could not I could not sneak out. Right. Fortunately, but I'm excited to see it. I love the first one. Yeah. So. You can find our library. Of, of of library it's up the road um it's right across the street from the high school yeah. uh, sorry this is about our library of shows not my town's library i apologize 1300 shows and counting over at ifanboy.com wherever podcasts are sold follow us at, at ifanboy comics on instagram to find out where the pick of the week is before the show comes out and sometimes for the best of the week in panels uh when that's a possibility always delightful thanks to connor for for going through with that um no probably none this week because because i'm at the wedding but sure yeah, because on the weekends I don't contribute. I just I I shut myself up in my room. I smoke, and I grumble. Smoke a pipe, and you've pace. Yeah, that's what I do. And I like I can't believe I have to do this all again on Monday. <laughs> that's my whole weekend. And so obviously there's no time for social Panels. media posting or yeah, panel clipping it. or anything like that. You you know it's like I just I have that. The anger. I it's because I don't talk about what happened in the war. You can follow us. <laughs> 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 I'm to make myself laugh. Uh, you can follow us individually at CS Kilpatrick on Instagram, Jay Flanagan on Instagram. Uh, that's both of us on Instagram. Those are our names. Uh, in fact, they both have the same format, which is, I believe, unintentional and coincidental. Totally unintentional. We did not coordinate that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, you can subscribe to youtube.com slash ifanboy. You'll find this show as well as our old video shows. They're all posted there. This show is posted every week. You can check it out there if you want. And also consider leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts, wherever you hear this show. It does help people find that we do appreciate that. And we're done. This is it. I didn't pass out, which is nice. Is I'm that a go concern? Lay down, though. Well, I'm a little tired. I still have some fatigue. <laughs> <clears throat> it's 630 over there. I have fatigue from being sick. Fair enough. I have a cough. I have uh, 
a little congestion and I have some fatigue. So, All right. um, it's just, it is what it is. Hopefully it passes. I'm much better than I was last week. So that's a bonus. It's true. You were hey, awful last this week. This was fun. I enjoyed this. This was a good week of comics. I enjoyed it was. the discussion. I'm happy you made it. 